Hello, everybody. It's Joshua Hayes here at BigWaveTrading.com coming to you with the September 2nd stock market wrap-up for you to use for September 3rd. First thing I'm going to talk about is the overall, pretty much, I would consider today an extremely dull day. I'm going to expand the chart out here. And what I want to show you is that basically today, I would say, was a constructive day. Volume was not higher than the day before, so really, it's not like there was extremely huge support. But as you can tell, intraday, there was a big enough reversal that the market managed to close above the middle of its range or right on the middle of its range. So it wasn't a bear session at all. It was kind of just an inconclusive session. You could call it bullish if you were expecting the market to crack wide open. You could say, hey, the market's not that bad. It held up today. But right now, I think basically it's best to sit back and wait because in my kind of mind right now, I'm kind of in a consolidation area between th this area right now and I'm going to have to move the line down a little bit. This area. Where's that middle area so I can move it down? So right here. So to me, I kind of see the market in between these two points right here right now. Just touches the bottom right there, touches the top right there, gets above for just a little bit and goes right back down there. Probably wouldn't touch the bottom again. So for the past month and two weeks, I'd basically say the NYSE is kind of just going nowhere. So, you know, really, if you're looking at it like that, you would want to buy the support level. However, I don't think it's good that it's coming down off the top of this area on such heavy volume. One, two, three, four. Look at a four-day chart. Clearly, the dominant bars recently are the big, tall red ones in the New York Stock Exchange. Now, let's look at the S&P 500. Of course, obviously, because of the New York Stock Exchange, it's basically the exact same thing. But you can see that there's also, whenever we do that, that there's an uptrend to this too. So while we do see the consolidation area at the same time connecting th this, these points right there. And that's a bad line because it just wasn't drawn right there on the point. So right there connecting this area right here. We can see that the 50-day moving average is going to be about on the same level as that uptrend line. That at the same time, like I said, we can put it in a minor, very minor consolidation-like area. Kind of expanding. You can see it's widening out, trying to form like the left side of a diamond almost, you know, or it's like a less than sign. So it's not something you want to see, especially with the heavy volume coming off the highs. Four-day chart, once again, the red bars are quite evident. But still, today overall, constructive session that we didn't break down further on heavier volume. Got lower volume on the pullback. That's always what you want to would rather see than heavy volume sell off like we had for three days in a row on these markets, which could mean churning also with the other distribution day right there on the 25th and the 24th. If we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven distribution days from this period going back to August, if you want to do that, some people might not be using that because we hit new highs here. And so now they're only going to be using these three. You can say that, yeah, we've had seven distribution days since the start of that initial breakout, and we've had two churning days, Th you know, two churning days, or you can say six bad distribution days, three churning days, including this day here. So it's just however you want to look at it right now. Short term, down, sub-intermediate term, slightly up, intermediate term, up, long term, on a weekly, down. That's from here to there. Down, down, down. Okay, so the last index is the NASDAQ I want to look at here. The NASDAQ, as you can see, lower volume, below average. Had a very constructive day, I guess you could say, except for it didn't close near the highs. So that could also be problematic. Even though we were only down 1.09% and it wasn't much and volume was lower, still, at one point, we got up to 1976 intraday. So we couldn't quite hold it on. But overall, very tight day. Basically, it's hard to really come to judgment on a day like today in the markets. SP 600, a little bit worse, so that's never good. Relative strength line moving down to a new short-term low. SP 400 moving down to a new short low, looking bad. So these were the these were very strong, somewhat leading indexes. The Nasdaq was a bigger leader. Look at the relative strength line below. So the mid-cap 400 was the leader. And then, as you can see, lower highs, just like the NASDAQ, whenever it hit new highs on the relative strength line, lower highs on the relative strength line when it hit new highs on price, I should say. And then let's look at the NASDAQ relative strength line, though, to compare the middle caps to the NASDAQ. See, the NASDAQ was clearly the strongest bird in the nest, so it's not good to see it not moving up anymore and to see more stocks breaking down. But one good thing, we have a lot of longs. 
We didn't load up on anything because we're not stupid or arrogant or greedy. If you did, though, <laughs> congratulations. You know, that's great that you can do that. I just can't. I, I'm going to diversify. I will load the boat in 10 to 20 stocks, and that'll be 100% of my portfolio whenever we get a bull market with the leaders. Um, IBD advises you guys three to four stocks for beginners. Yeah, for beginners. When you get older and you get advanced, and you learn how to do money management, you learn how to cut your losses fast and move your money to the new buys, and you know how to buy the perfect chart setups, you don't have to live in hindsight. You can learn from hindsight in the past and then use it for the future. So obviously nothing's going to get past me as long as my eyes are on these charts. As long as you do that, you should do well cutting those losses and buying those winners and keep doing that over and over. If you have cheap commissions, if you pay more than $3 per trade, SogoTrade.com, InvestorsInteractiveBrokers.com, MBTrading.com, TradeStation.com. TradeStation's got a deal. Open an account with them until the end of the year. I believe it's, what, what the software's free, and I don't know. I thought it was like some odd money or whatever, but it's like not cheap or something like that, I guess. I don't know. But bottom line, if, you, if you're if you thinking about moving an account, do it. Open one with TradeStation. I think I'm going to open one because I just withdrew all my money from Zecco because they wouldn't budge off the $4.50 per trade that they were giving me. I told them I wanted three because I had that broker, and they wouldn't do it. They stayed at four fifty. so I'm bye-bye. Got to go. So just give you an, a, advice out there. You know, I can even, like, just, like, show you. Look at this. Like, let's go to this www.tradestation.com. Look at this. Helping you guys out here before I leave. Get TradeStation free until 2010. Get started. Open and fund a new brokerage account by 930.09 and experience the power of TradeStation. And it is powerful. So, you know what? I might just go ahead and try that. Now that we're looking at the indexes here and that we're done, I want to now go back to the metals market. Platinum. Look at how well it's holding in. Oh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you this. Look at natural gas. What the heck happened? That thing fell off a cliff mightily, didn't it? Look at this arithmetic chart. Going back to 2008's top. Look at that. Look at how much it's off. 85%. That's incredible. That's amazing that it's still breaking down like this, this rapidly. To me, it's just mind-boggling. But I wanted to show you that. Anyway, platinum. So you can see, holding on to the 50-day moving average. Silver, up 2.67%. Beautiful chart. Clearly, you can see that it broke out of this right there. Clearly, it broke out of that today. Some people were like, well, it's not really breaking out right there. And I, I, I agreed. I agree. But there, now you got it. Now there's no reason to complain about what happened yesterday. And then, of course, we have gold. And right there, there's the downtrend line I brought to you earlier. Let's go ahead and connect it again keep going at that rate of descent and as you can see <clears throat> boom there's your buy signal 9109 the next day ding 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 up 2.35 percent gold is looking golden baby i really like the way i looked i drew the chart the triangle i believe last night if i didn't do it on this i did it on gold gld and then here we can show you this triangle oops right there and then you can even go back here, connect to there, and you can see that the stock ETF got right to the pivot. See that? Let's go to the arithmetic because I think it's clear. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, well, yeah, you can see the white line clear there. See how well it contains the upper price range in, Feb in March or February and in June and the lower touches in April, May, and July, and in August even? Look at that right there on August. Boom, fell right there, right to it. Support. And then... Boom, 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 gold, 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 gold. If you watched my video one yesterday, you got long gold. And if you don't believe me because you didn't watch video one and you don't want to waste your time watching it, which wouldn't be a waste of time, it would be really good because look at the relative strength line of gold. It's obviously leading. Go to SeekingAlpha.com and look up Joshua Hayes and go down and you will see I post an extremely long comment to a gold article that was published on Seeking Alpha where I contribute. The last stock I contributed was Kong. Let's see how that did since I gave it to you in April. I think I did pretty well for you there. So as you can see, the gold call that I made yesterday was clearly made before the 2.44% move in gold. 
and the 2.35% move in the World Gold Index right there. So gold is beautiful, and I have gold bullion <laughs> at a bank. Don't try to rob me. And I also have GLD, 25% of my IRA in that. And don't think my IRA is below six figures because it's not. So it's a good little chunk that 25% and to know, to, to know that I have 75% on the sidelines and I can't get long leading stocks because leading stocks won't lead. I'm at, at near the end so I can go ahead and show you guys now the subscribers. IBD 100 ticked a little bit higher today. That's good to see a little bit of positive divergence. Let's go look at the IBD 8585. You can see that ticked a lot higher, but not a ton higher, but just a lot higher. And as you can